scientific research is not just fun. Scientific research really can save human lives, and that's very important to me. Hi, I'm Dr. Gilbert N. Ling, or my Chinese name is simpler, Ling Ning. I was born in Nanking, China on December 26, 1919, to a Confucianist scholarly family, poetry and book family. When I was only about a year old or so, I went to live with my grandparents, a home connected to nature. Conrad Lawrence discovered that the gray goose hatched on a certain time, the 12th or 14th hour. Anything that moves is his parent, that's in printing. So in other words, every living creature as it develops has a moment of the window suddenly open and that moment will have a lasting impact. What must have imprinted on me at the proper time is the farm animals. So ever since the beginning, I have a deep love which never left me. Later on, it gradually expanded to include young humans. I love babies. <laughs> and indeed, this exposure to living things left in me a deep fascination with life, which I never lost. And from there, gradually, I grew further into trying to find more about these living creatures. I entered university located in Chongqing. The Japanese Air Force made a habit of bombing Chongqing, and they always want to drop bombs on our university too. After days in the shelter, we came out to find roof is gone. So we will try to find tiles and to cover up the part of uh, uh, the building that we sleep under. Time passed. And next thing you know, uh, I have already graduated with a bachelor degree in biology. And I took part in an event which has profound influence on the future of my life. It was scholarship for young Chinese to study in America. I was extremely lucky in having won the scholarship for biology. In 1944, physiologist Dr. Gilbert Ling won the coveted Boxer Indemnity Scholarship, allowing him to emigrate to the United States. But at the time, travel from China wasn't as straightforward as hopping on a transatlantic flight. We flew to Calcutta, India. Then we were on the boat to America. It took a month and we had met storms after storm my friends and so on were all lying sick and I was very proud. I was able to stand up and help to feed them. Eventually, we began to approach Manhattan and that impression of Manhattan never was reproduced again. It's just unbelievable. Our 9,000 mile automobile trip of the West, they, they won the Nobel Prize for Physics. Along with the scholarship, we had the option of choosing the professor we wanted to study. And I decided to choose University of Chicago and under Professor Ralph W. Girard. There, I met my life companion, Shirley Wong, who was going to be my wife for 60 years. At my wedding, when we were first married, I was originally planning to return to China. However, growth change in the condition in China made it impossible for me to return. So I stayed on in the United States to make use of what I learned and to turn into something useful to all mankind. At the University of Chicago, Ling helped to refine the glass capillary microelectrode, the once primitive tool turned into a cornerstone of modern biology and was attached to several Nobel Prize wins. Though his future in science looked bright, Ling was soon to learn the consequences of challenging dogma. My PhD work was on the electrical potential of living cells. 
I was asked by the department to give a Monday afternoon seminar talk, and the topic is the sodium pump. So I spent time in the library and read and read and read. The underlying theory was the membrane theory. Up to that moment, the, the cells were considered like sieves. This is called the semi-permeability. It says there are only two kinds of molecules in the world. They either can go in or they cannot go in. And those that cannot go in will stay out forever. How long? Eternity. That just does not make good sense. And finally, Monday afternoon came and I was standing on the podium ready for my talk on the sodium pump. However, the first thing I said was to my audience who came to hear about the sodium pump, I said, I really have nothing to tell them. There is only a name. There is no substance of what the sodium pump is, how does it work. I was taken away by two of my respected and beloved professors and given the same advice and almost verbatim. Each one tell me, Gilbert, you are a guy we all love and we don't want you to spend your life as a martyr. So leave that sodium pump alone. It is a sacred cow. What make a part of science a sacred cow? I took a long time and effort to come to the United States. I came to learn how to do science. How can I just give up the integrity of science for the sake of not offending the sacred cow? Gilbert went on to hold prominent positions at world-renowned institutions. Over decades, he formulated a radical new theory on the workings of the cell titled the Association Induction Hypothesis. This theory purports that it's the special arrangement of water and proteins that account for the molecular activities of the cell, and not the pumps and channels of a membrane. But rather than being taken seriously, his controversial theory marked the dismantling of his career. At that time, I had a whole laboratory full of bright young students who were either doing their PhD or doing postdoc from all over the world. The establishment simply made it impossible for me to get money. I had put my faith in science and hoped that I would get support. Suddenly, I had nothing. I was left on the street. When I told this to my wife, and she said, Gilbert, we only have $45 in the bank. Despite losing his position and his salary in 1988, Dr. Ling continued to study how life works at the deepest level, with his pioneering work inspiring a new generation of scientists. And in perhaps the greatest testament to his work, Raymond Damadian, the inventor of the first full-body MRI, credited him with their discovery. I got a couple of Gilbert's books. They're not easy to read. It took me five tries. I finally worked out what he was saying, and it's, you know, phenomenal. I think Gilbert Ling is a genius, and he's an immensely intellectual, honest man. His contributions to science are so immense that he should have been given a Nobel Prize. He, he was really like a litmus test for how anti-scientific a professor was, how readily they would dispose his whole position. If science is even partly wrong about something as fundamental as the workings of our cells, it's not surprising that cures for some of the most devastating diseases still elude us. The most interesting thing to me is how to make what I discovered to last to the future generation. Because the worst condition, when I pass away, the whole thing will just disappear but I intend to be long, here a longer time. <laughs> okay.